Right, I'm back down at Matter Matter with David Arvidson from Arvidson Wilkshires, and we've been working in the wool shed today and yesterday. Two days, yeah. W what have we been doing in, in the wool shed with your shedding sheep? So we're doing hoof schools at the moment on the ram lambs, and that's one of our key indicators for whether they have a chance of um, staying on for stud work or even staying on to sale. Uh, there's a group of them that we've marked for culling out on hoof. Um, but not very many? No, not a lot. Um, it's about 5% I think so far. So uh, quite pleased with that. You know, it's, uh, hmm. I, big... I will put a little bit of footage and we will go through some of the foot scoring that we did yesterday and a bit of an explanation on, on how David's system works. But we'll do a very brief system. Can you explain your sort of your, you've almost got two systems and you've got one to six, Yep. There's this crossover at six, and you've got seven, eight, nine, ten. Just can you right. explain how that system sort of of works? How how you apply that to the sheep? Okay, so ten is perfect. Ten's the excellent sheep, the one I'm really looking for. And you get the odd one like that. We don't give many a ten. Um, and so from ten, we start deducting points backwards. You've got eight two toes, so it's quite easy. Sometimes we even just on one toe, we may deduct. Uh, three, four, five points just for that one toe if it's, um, we consider it to be uh, a poor enough genetic problem, um, which is typically if, if there's a really bad curve in it. We don't tend to have too much trouble with um, the snowshoe look where it grows out forward, but we're looking for twists uh, sideways and curves like that mainly, um, and splits. So we'll deduct back from 10 those points, but if an animal has got um, a couple of, or even one significant um, separation of the shell from the pad, uh, we'll just go to six straight away. We won't um, let it go above six if it has uh, separation occurring in the hoof. Um, yeah, so sometimes they're quite small or only one of them. Um, if we're doubtful as to whether it's really just a split, then yeah, we, we might give it a bit of tolerance. But generally, um, they stop at six, the ones with a split, even if we would have only deducted one or two marks for the, the overall shape of the pad and the um, leading edge and the side walls. For me coming in and looking at it, I can look at some of the feet and go, there's some splits, there's a couple of faults. The six is going to be the maximum that sheep can get. And then I, I can go through with you and you know you will deduct toes, splits, numbers, and it might be a five or a four. But, but I find that very easy. And what it means too is, and what I'm looking at other sheep, your sixes still aren't a bad hoof. No. That, and, and you've actually mentioned that for a stud you should go from a six up. Yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, uh, for stud work. Um, if you can stay above six, or if it's a six, just check that hoof and, and make sure you're still happy with the shape, or that there isn't any significant uh, separation yeah. in it. Um, but seven, eight, nine, ten should be reliably uh, very good to use. Um, keeping in mind there, though, that we are doing this here in uh, June 2024. Um, so you give that animal another five months and other issues can occur, but for the straight out uh, labor side on the farm, this has taken three of us uh, two days to complete this work. We're not finished. Uh, to get near completion. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're gonna have a few more to do tomorrow. Please tell yeah. you how late you go tonight. Yeah, possibly. So. Um, and so, yeah, that's 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 a big cost. Yeah, that's um, one, at least the equivalent of uh, what one and a half labour units for the whole week. So you know, mm. you're, you're talking getting close to probably two grand worth of work by the time we actually finish, um, just on the labour content. So significant. Mm. I, I was actually really fortunate to to come along, and um, we were they, fortunate that Calvin came along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's uh, and been rolling them over for me. I, I, I've uh, been doing the hard yards, but it's a good le lesson and a good learning curve for me because we've looked over oh, well over 200 sheep now. Yeah. Um, by the time he's finished, he will, David will have done over 300, yep. but I've looked at over 200 um, sheep 
that's a lot of hooves and I've learnt a lot. So it's been a great lesson for me when that's I've good. just done my, my ewes, my ewe lambs myself. Mm. And also understanding the system that you are, you are grading these sheep extremely hard. You are being very, very hard on them. Right. So even a six is still quite a reasonable okay. hoof. Mm. Now, a few things. What does a sheep need besides good genetics? What other factors affect that hoof of that animal? Yeah, um, well, as with any aspect of the animal, uh, you've got climatic conditions and you've got um, the mineral and element status of your soils as well. Um, you've also got um, hard surface issues, you know, where there's stone. If you've got uh, concrete areas in the yards that match up to stone areas and the stone ends up on the concrete, some of the things that we're marking down on and we look at and say, well, actually, that looks more like that animal has actually just injured itself at times when we've been handling it in, in the stony or concrete type areas. So yeah. we, we're trying to balance that up. Some of them are obvious genetic, but some of just those little chips out of the toe and things like that um, are just as likely that it, it's uh, just uh, run a little bit hard on the stone or concrete areas. Yeah. So since I was last here, you've um, put these rams under a, an extreme challenge. Mm. You've come through and you've drafted off the lights from the heavies. Yeah and getting an indication of, of looking at the, the light lambs and the, the heavy lambs, the lighter ones that have had more of a challenge or suffered more from that challenge don't seem to have as good a feet. Or, a, 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 so it does seem that mm. overall animal health makes a difference to that foot. Yet in the, in the heavy mob, <laughs> the really heavy ram, it seems that it's harder for a big, heavy, fast-growing lamb yeah. to support a really, really good hoof. Yeah. That just seems to be a tendency that I've seen. It, it may not be the true reality, but it, it's something that I seem to observe. That, that the, the smalls in the, in the heavy mob, if that makes sense, yeah. tended to have quite good feet. Um, and in fact, I think you said this morning of the 130-odd we did yesterday, over half of them were a seven and above. Was that correct? That's right, yeah. About, I think it was 65 out of the 135 were seven and above. And there was only, I think, 20 that were uh, four and below. Yeah. I, I was quite pleased with that. I sort of consider, you know, basically if it's a 012, we just write cull next to it. If it's a three, then we think, Okay, if it's got a, some really good traits in other ways, it, it could be good. Uh, maybe it's a terminal sire. And then a, a four and a five, um, okay for commercial work. Um, it, it sort of may, may depend where you are, you know. You, you don't want to put those ones in a swamp, probably. Yep. Um, but then once, once you get yeah, above that four and a five, once you get the six and up, we start considering them and looking at them ourselves even for a stud. Um, but if, yeah, of course we like to stay as high as we can and we, we have seen big improvements um, yeah, because it's only really about the last uh, seven years we've gone extremely in, intensive and uh, fanatical almost on how hard we go on the hoof and uh, we sort of I made a mistake with uh, a couple of rams I, I bought in um, at one stage uh, about 15 years ago and yeah so <laughs> so, so even, even, even within your mistake, situation you, you, yeah. you can make a mistake I made a mistake yeah yep. <laughs> I, I also did see a perfectly good sheep flipper out there sheep roller on the yep. trailer mm -hmm. and yet here I am turning them over for you Is yeah it, you're, you're faster than the rollover crate I'm faster than the machine yep there you, you know, go. <laughs> there you go. You're a machine beyond machines. Yeah. Yeah. Also reinforced this machine, so there is some metal in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's been it's been really great going through the feet. Uh, I will put up some footage of the feet and try and help some people with that. Yeah. But it's great to see actually how the quality of the the feet that you're turning out there. Mm. And um, I think that environmental effect and the animal health. It's interesting comparing the mobs 
to see what feet are in there and then the size of those animals making all making a difference. And I think it's a problem that all sheep farmers face of getting sheep with very good feet. And I'm yeah. I'm really, really impressed actually with especially yeah. those sevens and how many there are that are seven and above. Yeah, yeah. This this year is exceptional. Especially um, considering it's been quite a wet season. And it's been a, a wet, moist season. They've never had a, a dry spell other than uh, late January, start of February. About, mm -hmm. a, about a four to six week period there where the, the brown, grass didn't brown off, but it was a drier spell. Other than that, they've been in moisture up around their hooves the whole time. So with a challenge like that and to, to getting the scores we're getting, uh, I'm really pleased. Yeah. Excellent. This is where we face the dilemma of stud breeding. It's got a, a slightly broken toe and a, a gap in there. So it started to delaminate a fraction there. Otherwise the leading edge on the back is quite nice. Um, there's a little bit of unworn growth on the side there, but nothing much. But then the, um, the front hoof is definitely not as perfect as that uh, number nine one we looked at. You can see tendency to curve in both toes on both front legs. And you can see that that curve is turning into the side wall, coming over a bit from each side, and that's giving that effect of that little bit of flap there that's not wearing. So, um, not perfect, not a disaster, but because he's got that uh, tiny bit of delamination back there and this little bit of rollover, that's probably his worst toe, this one. You can see that side wall is just coming down there. With the flap, I just play with the flap to see whether it's like a permanent growth area or whether it's just a loose bit that will wear off or not. Once again, he's got quite nice depth back to the gusset area, so that's quite good on uh, all the toes. So, um, yeah, but that delamination and that bit of curve, um, I would knock him yeah. back to a uh, six, so... Any delamination. That, that's through here, isn't it? That's I don't go right by my thumb. Six. The delamination is right there. Oh, here. Yeah. That front toe, that toe there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's quite a bad, bad bit, isn't it? Yeah. The, there was like a, a bit of broken nail there. So sometimes the, the hard part is to tell whether it's genetic or whether it's uh, something that's been damaged out on the gravel and things like that. Um, so at the end of the day, you've just got to balance it out against other traits and say what are you willing to tolerate? Or you want to record what an obvious cull is? Yeah, because you haven't actually come across lots where you've said, hey, this is absolutely a cull, have you? No. We're back in the pen. We, we were dragging you outside yesterday. It was yeah. better light. You... Oh, okay. What do we got? Okay. So, just looking at those back ones, even without touching them, you can see how there's a, a definite curve in and a separation and the tip of the toe, the other side wall is curving over as well. So both side walls, that one's coming over, this one's coming over and the toe next to it also, also got splitting. Then on the other back hoof, it's the same situation again. The inner toe is curving in both, uh, both walls both the inner and outer wall are curving. That toe, that's that's not so bad, but it's got two like that, and oh. you, you definitely don't want to breed that into anyone, and it's got gapping, splitting through just about every toe it's got, so um, we barely even give it points. It's basically just straight down to a zero in culling, or... In your system, do you cull it at a three or a two? Um... Two, so two's zero, definitely. Zero, one, twos are just culled. Yeah, and threes are Three, really... Threes are there, but they're really what you'd think of as a terminal sire. Yeah, or, um, or check later on and, and reassess where they're well, at. Yeah, a three is almost beyond reassessment. Okay. But but you just... It's, it's not a hoof that you want breeding into maternal replacements. Yeah. So a, a three is something that could be a stunning ram might throw, you know, beautiful uh, fat He's up there. Yeah. Look, yeah. look, I can't put my hand across him. No, and he's got that beautiful uh, short wool. 
I'm hoping his hoof come up well. Three. We don't have to cull him on hoof. Five seventy seven. Well, he is a he's quite a stunner, isn't he? Yeah. This is actually a, a really good sheep to show a close to perfect sort of hoof. See the leading edge on those back toes is almost perfectly straight. So that's ideal. And that translates into underneath a really good clean pad. There's no side wall coming over, there's no heel coming over. It's a nice shape. Um, yeah, quite ideal. That one likewise. There's no surplus uh, growth whatsoever, which under a moist summer like this, you'd normally expect a little bit of flap there. The front ones, once again, the pad is perfect shape. There's nice height in between the toes to where the uh, sort of gusset joins them. So it's not too close to the ground, that gusset. So that's all looking good. Only downside with this one, you can see a little bit of curve just on the leading edge. That one's pretty right, but that one's got curve coming around and um, mm, just a tiny bit isn't yeah, it? Yeah yeah and same same on this one that's pretty right but this one's got that slight curve so I, I'd probably only take one mark off this animal I'd give it a 9 out of 10 um, yeah quite ideal that's so you've got a little bit of like the edge um, just like a little bit of, of delamination just there yeah that's that just normal wear and tear that at this stage uh, um, yeah there's a, a little soft flap there which um, is probably just yeah at, at this stage I, I wouldn't put that down as delaminating no just, no, just so um, you'll okay, see others soft. which will have far more of a split in them than that and, like it's, it's um, I'm being really really fussy if you're going for the yeah, nth degree a, at eight, when you're at a nine like that is a uh, like as soon as you picked yeah, it up you could see it was a fantastic yeah that's see how it's just bending over so it's probably just a little bit of growth area that's just growing and then breaking off as it goes yeah so very nice and a nice broad tummy to go with it yeah lovely yeah, no wool down the belly so that's nice. He's uh, starting to get nice shape and growth in the testes as well. So yeah, pretty nice animal overall. Um, 